This weekend we remember the World Day of Prayer for Prisoners. And so the bishop, our bishop, Bishop Marcus, has written a pastoral letter to be read in all the parishes of the diocese this weekend with regards to this day of prayer for prisoners and their families. So you get a little break from me. But don't worry, next week we get back to the regular scheduled program. I think you might be the only place in the whole diocese that gets to hear the bishop's letter in an American accent as well. So the bishop says, Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, At this time each year, the Church in England and Wales invites us to pray for prisoners and their families. This year, however, the invitation has a particular significance for our diocese. Over the last few months, many people will have experienced, or are still experiencing, a loss of personal freedom as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The day-to-day -day life we took for granted has been challenged. For prisoners, the lockdown resulted in only the very basics being permitted, a shower, a phone call, and a short amount of exercise. For the prisoner's family, lockdown meant limiting even more the small amount of contact they had with their loved ones. In this Sunday's Gospel reading, Jesus makes use of a parable to remind the people of Israel that they had begun to take for granted the freedom and generosity they had received in God's invitation to be His chosen race. The reading invites us to reflect on the invitation we too have received from the Lord, the blessings we have as children of God through our baptism, and the generous response we should make by helping those who are poor and in need. In his teaching, Pope Francis urges us to become the Church of the Poor and engage with those who are wounded in our world. At the start of his pontificate, he said, I see clearly that the thing that the Church needs most today is the ability to heal wounds and warm the hearts of the faithful. Similarly, he has said, an evangelizing community gets involved by word and deed in people's lives. It bridges distances, it is willing to abase itself if necessary, and it embraces human life, touching the suffering flesh of Christ in others. <clears throat> Becoming a church of the poor in our society, however, involves careful and complex discernment of who are the poor and most marginalized, together with courageous commitment. What is more, becoming involved with the most marginalized in our society may well lead to uncomfortable associations, unpopularity, and general rejection. At the core of our Catholic faith, though, is respect for the dignity of the human person. This demands that we value the lives of everyone. St. Thomas Aquinas said, We should despair of no man in this life, considering God's all-powerfulness and mercy. And he pointed out, that God discloses this foremost by saving people from despair. As Christians, we cannot support a society that just locks away and abandons criminal offenders. A question the Catholic bishops of England and Wales have consistently asked is, are our prisons potential places of redemption, or rather human warehouses? Can contact and support for offenders and for their victims be a practical pastoral means of implementing the gospel mandate to release prisoners? And our criminal justice system be a structure which incorporates the gospel imperatives of justice and mercy? Over the past two years, Caritas Leeds has conducted an inquiry which focused on this question. It aimed to raise awareness about the criminal justice system and explore different approaches to restorative justice. On Monday, 19th October, I plan to join Mark Burns Williamson, the West Yorkshire Police and Crime Commissioner, in a virtual launch of the recommendations and resources resulting from the inquiry. I hope and pray that this initiative will be used by the various members of our diocesan family to foster change and to address the challenges and possible injustices 
experienced by victims of crime, prisoners, ex-offenders, and their families. In your prayers this day, I ask you to remember in your intentions all who are in need of forgiveness, healing, and mercy, that the grace of our Lord Jesus 